Okay, good morning. I'm uh, laughing at my experimentations today. I, I constantly am experimenting and doing things. I'm making a thing to hold my computer, which is some kind of board. I, I did it the wrong way the other day. I've definitely learned that if I drink a glass of water before I drink a cup of coffee, I decrease the amount of coffee I drink. Plus, because it fills me up more and I, it kind of offsets the uh, idea of drinking too much coffee. But today I'm going to talk about the philosophy of listening to lives, okay? And uh, I've kind of had a spiritual awakening or a epiphany or a movement of some kind, okay? And uh, I'm probably going to, you know, I never know what I'm going to write about, but eventually you get it together where you, all of a sudden, if you're writing a book, uh, something motivates you to go to the end. Like I've probably started 20, 20, 30 books, right? And, uh, but what moves me on to the end? I do know that most, uh, probably half my books, I really would need another person to help me because I'm just not that motivated on the subject. And it's, you know, you create a synergy when you're working with somebody else. But philosophy of listening to lies. Um, I'll tell you a quote right off the top. You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with, Jim Rohn. Okay, so what does this mean? It means that, um, and it's very applicable to what I'm talking about today, because um, you really are the people that you um, think. So if you want to define who a person is, you can almost look at all their friends, and that, that is who they are. Okay, and uh, the people they keep are the people, is the, the morals they keep, okay? And that, it's not that simple, okay, especially for business owners, because we often have to associate with a lot of people that are not um, necessarily, uh, you know, what we want. But I mean, my best friends are who I am. So if I got the, my five best friends, that would be a good rep example of who I am. Okay. Um, but I'm going to kind of read this today. Um, over 40 years ago in Midland, Michigan, while Midland, Michigan, while walking into Little Chef Restaurant, I became a true believer in what we call brutal honesty. That's a reference to an AA thing. Um, as I walked, I looked at what I believe was a rising sun. I could see a vacant field, and I was just looking out there losing myself and said to myself, no more. As I understand and believe, AA calls it a spiritual awakening when everything from the past ends okay so what happened at that moment i'll, I'll kind of pair, put in some extra thing i was tired and i gave up on drinking i just gave up that doesn't mean i was capable of stopping it was meant that i was a true believer i gave up i was going to quit okay no matter what okay and um then in January of 2024, just recently, I helped a, a normal man, an average man, um, nothing unique or special, uh, travel to Lake Athlon, uh, Guatemala. As we as we sat drinking, we he demanded that uh, that for me to meet women, that I needed to lie to them. Okay, and this prevailing conversation went on for days, uh, along with other ideas. He's he 100% believed that he had the right to lie to his wife when she was still alive, to his many girlfriends, to anyone he considered dumber than him. Sort of funny, I believe that he believed everyone <laughs> was dumber than himself. This was a, a uniquely unaware, unempathetic type person that really could not relate to other people. Okay, so what happened? I got this guy, he had this... Uh, Macho creed that, that, see, a lot of men have this creed. They have this idea that uh, I only talk to men and what I say to women doesn't really matter, okay? And this is really annoying to me, okay? But he, he actually thought for some reason that I um, lied to women that I dated, okay? But he broke me, okay? He literally broke me. Mentally, I was like, this is ridiculous. I broke. I was broken. I was finished. Maybe a second spiritual awakening happened. I vowed to no longer listen to people lie to me. Okay? This is a slippery slope. I mean, 
At what level of uh, never-ending lies do we walk away? The art of philosophy is how to listen to lies. Okay, how the art of the philosophy of listening to lies is at what juncture do we say enough and this person needs to stay away from me? Okay, now me, I have always been a person that could listen to like anybody and not really uh, feel influenced or change my mind or even get annoyed, okay? I can listen to a thief, I can listen to a whoremonger, I can listen to anybody. I can listen to a Biden supporter, a, a Trump supporter, and I don't really change emotionally. I just don't take it with me, okay? And uh, on the other side is if they're talking in a tone of voice, now this is a different thing, if they talk in a tone of voice, or uh, an idea that I must agree with them, which is what this one gentleman was doing. And I go, you know, you won't let me just be neutral. You, you have to demand that I agree with you. And this is one of the things I have found is some of my knowledge that I uh, try to share with different people when somebody wants to be with me, they don't really want to ask me questions or share or whatever. They, they want me to agree with their lifestyle. And that is really difficult. Okay, because I live, for one thing, I have a radically different lifestyle as I've lived in, in, you know, 114 countries and been roaming the world for 25 years, right? Uh, 26 years. Um, and um, I got I to gotta upgrade my, my thing, right? But uh, I had a spiritual awakening talking to him because I go, but I'll go on. Uh, Okay, Spiro, no, no, Spiro, this is something so. Okay, I'm going to try to explain what a true believer is, okay? Because a true believer is a commitment. It's like we have an epiphany and then we get it. So I'm going to tell you a story, a really interesting story, about a girl in Bolivia. Many years ago, while I was in Bolivia, a woman from the U.S. called me a true believer. The phrase has rattled around in my head for over 15 years, at least. She talked about backpackers, travelers, and world travelers who advise other travelers. And that's me. I'm a backpacker traveler who advise other travelers. She, she said, Andy, you are a true believer that no traveler should ever give bad advice to another traveler. I 100% believe that I should never, ever, under any condition, give bad advice or anything that's skewing the um, truth to another traveler. Okay, as a person, Andy Lee Graham, who has uh, written a blog post over 10,000 times and recorded over 5,000 YouTube videos, as an actual traveler, not a play around traveler, but a pretend, not a pretend traveler, I'm a person who lives on the road for over 26 years. I have been alone for the most part, lying in beds in strange little hotels from Thailand to Togo, Africa. Uh, to Paris, France, either writing or creating videos, sort of an ongoing history of my thoughts, my life, and what is happening daily in my world. Note, I am alone 99% of the time. I'm alone. Okay. Uh, when I met the woman in Bolivia, she was scared and traumatized. This was a very, this is a real experience. Uh, two policemen had jumped into her taxi, one on each side of her in the back of the car, um, and forced her to go to an ATM machine uh, where she had to put in her ATM card and extract as much money as she could and give to these police. Uh, so she, she was alone. But so she arrived at my hotel. She was alone. Her pain. She was a beautiful woman, a beautiful, blonde, strong woman. This was not a weak woman, okay? But uh, traveling on. So it, was, it wasn't like this was just some wimpy girl. This was a very strong woman. Okay, but you know, when overwhelming force, two large policemen in Bolivia get on each side of your car and the drivers helping them. Okay, so, and as I was, listen patiently, as no words could change the situation, there was no way for me to remove the trauma. It, you know, I had to just listen. And the pain, the fear, I was grateful. I was very grateful they did not rape her, okay? They really just took her money, okay? And I listened. There is a natural intimacy, a bond when you share a, kind of a traumatic experience with somebody, okay? I've done this many times in my life with my, in, a, in a time when a person was thinking about killing themselves or lots of different situations when they, you know, when 
you could say the shit hit the fan, right? Um, an awareness of our vulnerable, our vulnerable, I can't say this word, vulnerabilities. Okay, she was realized that she was vulnerable. And we are never safe. Nobody's ever safe, okay? They think they are, but it's an illusion, a delusion, okay? But um, then she read my blog and followed me along for years and called me a true believer because I write and talk about people who are going to travel alone by themselves. Any person, whether a group, a family, a girl, a man, when anyone travels more than 100 to 500 miles from home, there is a feeling of being lost. Got the wrong word in here. Every time you read these things, you want to update them, right? <laughs> okay. When you, when you read out loud, one of the best ways to write something is to read it out loud. I got a program called HAL or something that reads it out loud. But I need to read it like before you publish a book, you should read it like three or four times or have other people read it out loud. Okay. Okay. Print it out and read it out. Okay. But a true believer knows the words given from one travel to another can make all the difference. So I'm a true believer that believes that a person traveling alone, 500 miles from home, alone by themselves, it's cruel to tell them advice that is not 100%. And like when, like a lot of the reason why I don't watch travel videos is because they're cruel. Okay, 99% of them are are telling people the wrong thing. I'm always having these guys talk about Philippines because the Philippines or Thailand or even Colombia, whatever, they'll go on for hours about what some ding-a-ling guy, a liar, has said about that country, these countries. And I go, guys, please stop, stop watching these videos, okay? They really just are steering you the wrong way. And they're trying to, I don't know what you want to call them, they, they, they catastrophize or they celebrate their their lack of understanding of the world. And most of these guys are just uh, just evil, okay? Because they're going to make themselves look good at this. You know, they're going to be like this teacher. They're going to teach you how to run flat. Every country is different, right? And it's very difficult to uh, give an ongoing thing. So the guys that the guys that live in one country and only write about make videos about one country for sure. They create a story that's not true, okay? A true believer knows that words given from one traveler to another can make all the difference. Can change the whole thing. Everything can change. That, that to willing without remorse, without thought, tell another traveler a lie to make money is like hurting the small child living in each traveler, each person who is lost. Okay, we're like small children when we get, the farther we get away from home, it's like, Mom, where am I? Hey, you know, Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. You know, Toto, I don't think this is Kansas anymore. This is real. This isn't fake, okay? The farther you get away from home, and the longer you stay out, the more you feel alone, the more you realize the, uh, the impact of being away from home, okay? But... Um, there's a song called 500 Miles, um, and I put the words here. I'm, I'm 500 miles from home, 500 miles, 500 miles. Lord, I'm five mi 500 miles from home. Not a shirt on my back, not a penny to my name. Lord, I can't go home this way. Okay, it's a really good song. and it's, uh, I, I put the link to the mama and the papas that sang a really very, very most painful video in some ways um, I try to explain this to people that um, everything is of higher impact see travel travel is living your life at ten times the normal speed you experience all the new things plus everything's new every day it's not like I, I have very few routines to do it. So in a lot of ways, I'm always telling people to travel slower. I said, if you get stressed, and a lot of people think nothing's going to stress them. Well, <laughs> the minute you're 500 miles from home, <laughs> you lost the hook on your mother and your father, your family, your friends, and your job and all that stuff. You're out on the bait. You're just alone. You're out on the tether, right? Okay. 
but go listen to the song. I'm going to put this link in the uh, description to my uh, Google Doc sheet I, where I've written about this. But 40 years ago, as I became a true believer in the truth, okay, I, I sit there and I looked into this field and I became a true believer that I had to live by brutal honesty to fall in love with myself. Okay, I only worried about myself. 40 years ago, I was only worried about myself, my personal salvation. To be on the right path, a journey we do alone, okay? Uh, we never do it with another pre people. The brutal truth is something we, we learn on our own, okay? It is a, it's the only value of a person. It takes energy. It's the peeling of an onion. See, the, the layers of our personality come off like a... It's not, it's not an event. You can't just make a sit decision to be a good person, okay? It takes work to unravel all the dysfunctional characteristics that make make us who we are. We, we should, in a way, always become a better person. And that's why when somebody says something to me that sort of hurts my feelings, I first think to me, like, why are my feelings hurt? Okay? And then I, I try to take responsibility in me before I start talking about them. But the lies we tell others... Uh, the lies we tell ourselves are removed. The lies we tell others are removed. Everybody, I guess, everybody thinks, oh, I don't lie. And that's just not true. You, you lie to yourself. You exaggerate. You leave out things. There's so many ways that we are, uh, the, the correlation between our subconscious and our conscious mind are not in sync. Okay, Nobody, I mean, that, they wouldn't have Freud and Jordan Peterson if we didn't have these two people in ourselves. You have the dark side, the light side, or whatever. When I wrote that book, Experiment, I put a little, a little devil on one, I put the little devil on my uh, right shoulder my, and uh, an angel on the other shoulder because I want you to understand, each one of us is dealing with these two voices in our mind. But when, when I listen to this man demand, push, shove, and mentally try to bull, bully, he was being a bully, trying to uh, say and admitting, he truly believed that I lied to women, that the only way you could meet a woman was to lie. And he didn't think any man, he actually was across the board, he believed that all men lied to women to meet them. Okay. And I said, but I, I don't lie to women. I, I believe, in fact, the line that I used to say, to when I was in university is the best line is no line. The more honest you can be, the more women will endear themselves to you. Um, uh, but this was an unspoken, you know, he lied to women, everything he did. This is an unspoken, spoken, truly anal belief that men carry that there is no reason to tell women the truth. It's a, it's, I, I get it all the time. Men constantly act like there's this other human out there called a woman that's a different species that we don't need to talk to. And I go, but the only thing you guys ever dream about is women. This is the wrong path, guys. Um, if all, I, I can tell you, everybody that ever says that, they, they are almost always watching videos on women, okay? Uh, women that true. The men talk to me and the women talk to men. They believe this. There's, they believe that the men should talk to the men, they should go talk to the men, and the women should go talk to the women. And the men's good old, good old boys club, right? Uh, and an ocean of difference uh, relieves us of the responsibility of telling the women the truth. They don't believe they have any responsibility of telling the women the truth. And I, I really wish this would change. I have never, ever understood this why a person would love another person and pound nails of distrust into the thing we call love is beyond my grasp. I don't understand this. Um, a small nail called a white lie is the same as a large spike. When two adults lie to each other, it is as, it's like two children in love crippling the small child in, in, inside the other child. A lie just really is like, it's like your mother letting you down, right? Your father letting you down. And I know a lot of you have never had a father or mother that was actually responsible. I, I used to laugh at my father. My father would arrive a half hour early hour early and I, I was always very careful about trying to get him to pick me up. I would, you know, he one time sit at the uh, Amtrak uh, train station for about 10 hours because the train arrived late. My dad never stopped being dependable. 
as my mother never stopped loving in a way. My father was a rock of Gibraltar. When he said he was going to pick you up, didn't matter where, how, he was going to do it, okay? He wasn't going to arrive late. He was going to be extremely defensive. Listening to a person lie and saying nothing. We do this all the time. We listen to a person that we know are exaggerating, uh, embellishing, creating a story that's better. You know, there's nothing wrong with a good story and a little uh, exaggeration is not really a big deal. But the idea of them, think there's, a, there's an idea that when expats go abroad, they automatically give themselves a, uh, like it's like they're in the army and they give themselves a, 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 a raise, they give their job, they, get, they made more money than they actually did. They were actually no longer a sergeant, they were a general. <laughs> okay, uh, the world is created the way they want to be, not who they are. Okay, there's very little correlation between what an expat says, a person living abroad or a traveler and who they really are. The minute they get more than 500 miles away, they have permission to be somebody else. And this is the problem, okay? Um, they're not really, okay? I've learned that there's another. When this man was propag propagandizing to me that this this life that he believed that all that I lived, okay, I was sitting there that we must lie to him. What kept going through my brain was the question. And it was serious. I, I sit there and go, what have I done in my life that would lead this man to believe I lie? <laughs> okay? I, I couldn't I sit there and I go. He's watched videos of mine. He's done all this stuff. Have I ever celebrated lying to somebody? I, I, I just don't believe that's my way. I don't believe I ever try to act like, I, yeah, I'm a cheeky guy and I make funny jokes and stuff. And I, I'm a little on the edge sometimes, but I don't, I don't say go lie or anything or act like lying is a good idea. Um, I, I, I have been peeling this onion for 40 years. I am an honest man. I have, 40 years ago, I first got sober. I got sober for three years, got drunk for about three months, and then been sober for 37 years right now. Okay. I, I don't really remember what it's like to drink. But uh, I've been peeling this honesty thing and how to do it for 40 years. So I've been thinking about myself and how to be a better person for 40 years. But when this man told me this, I go, what in the world's happening here? Okay. Yes, he knew some of the same people as me. We had a shared group of people that um, we, we were a part of a social group. And he knew that I associated with some people that he had associated with. And he knew they, they agreed with him. Okay. And I had never really hung around with these guys, even though I had indirectly shared space with them, I guess you'd say. He assumed they were the same of the same ilk, a like kind relationship. And I was like, come on, what happened? This guy associated me <laughs> with things. And, and a lot of the, re the reason why I shut down, you know, I really walk away from the, uh, a social network I started is they are nothing like me, okay? I don't want to be anything like them. And I don't want them to represent me. I don't want you to think I'm like them. I don't want anybody to even consider me slightly like these dinglings, okay? Very few of them. There's a few of them, yes, that are, are good, upstanding people, but the majority of these people are lost, okay? They are lost because they are incapable of talking without lying. But as another layer comes off my skin, I peel the onion to discover more truths inside. We are defined by the people we share time with. You can't accidentally have a lying friend without being considered that friend. And I'm, I'm also realizing that when I interview somebody, I have to interview somebody that I am proud of. It's like I won't recommend a product I won't recommend a hotel. I don't do all this stuff unless I do. I could never be a radio announcer because I'm not going to stand up, you know, st sit there and say that this product is good when I don't 100% believe in it. I don't just say things because I make money. I don't do that. Um, but it appears that, that even out our actions, our words, our thoughts, to just share time with a person who has this corruption of the spirit and say nothing is to be complicit. 
is to agree. Our agreement subsidizes, enables, and broadcasts to that we approve of these corrupt spirits. You can't accidentally hang around it. So right now, from now on, for the rest of my life, I'm going to be hanging around with what I call the philosophers. The philosopher is the person that has a clear and sustained effort to think clearly and honestly and truthfully. Philosophy means the love of wisdom. And if a person doesn't love the truth, they don't really love wisdom. And if they, you know, it's like the people that put this bait click things. I mean, you can't hardly get on the internet now without seeing somebody twisting the words to make it, to, to hook you into something that's truly not there. I, I really think that uh, everybody thinks it's okay to lie to attract attention. And I'm going to these more bland backgrounds and I'm going to kind of a very uh, words only situation because I don't want to lead you astray. I want to lead you into the path of an honest person. But I also want to only attract people that can read, can understand, that care. Uh, most people are only uh, interested in getting entertained. There's absolutely 19 out of 20 people. Like I know that right now I'm only talking to the people that are really interested in um, learning and caring and understanding. Everybody else, you know, they clicked and they went someplace else. So right now at this juncture in this video, I know that the only people that are watching are the people that... Um, are trying to make the decision whether I'm, I'm telling the truth or not telling the truth. Well, it's not truth or not truth. They're making a decision as how it applies to them. Okay. Yet many, many a person says to me, Andy, why would you listen to people who lie, cheat, and steal? And for years I have said, I would not have anybody to talk to. <laughs> okay. I um, mean, my, my discernment level and my bullshit meter and my Deanna Troy beta soy valuation in my brain can feel when somebody's uh, thing. I dated a girl last year that uh, was really nice, but she, she could not tell the truth. She would, plan, you know, she just couldn't tell the truth to a person. She went into this anxiety thing, and I'm sort of glad that I dodged a bullet because I kept trying to say, we have to be honest. If you want to be with me, I'm an honest guy. You're going to look really bad if you don't honest. Because I'm not going to cover up and try to pretend and make anything. I will not cover up for your lies. I remember Anna asking me why she didn't call. I said, she's just lying to you. She's just trying to make you feel good. And I said, she's just going to tell you to call her, and she's not going to call you. Um, as a person says this to me, as the same person says, why would you ever hang around with the person that doesn't lie? I could rattle off a dozen times the same person has lied. And it never crossed their mind why they have whitened a lie and said it without a second thought. Most people don't even have a even a slight desire to tell the truth. They really do. If you want to watch a really good show about lying, watch a television show called Lie to Me. Okay, it's really good about the, the natures of lying. A philosophy of the truth, the wisdom to live by the truth, one realizes there are people who try to tell the truth. There are people that try to tell the truth. The philosophers walking the earth. But as we humans, small, weak, and fragile, we are often led into temptations too great where we lie to avoid an emotional pain. Most people would lie just on anything, okay? But um, there are times when you get into a situation where you have to really think about it. And it's, there's a real easy situation when you're put in a stress where you feel like saying a lie just to get the person. Just stop talking. That's all you got to do. Just stop talking. And they will eventually leave you alone. You don't have to reply to them. There is no written law that I have to reply to a person. Okay? But can mankind learn to stop talking? The phone's ringing. Can mankind learn to stop talking when they are tempted to lie? Can you learn to stop talking? And mankind learn to walk away from people who wish us to listen to their lies. So can you walk away from people that are, are telling lies? So it's just simple. You just walk away from the people that are telling lies and realize that uh, you are the five people you associate with. You are defined by the people. 
I'm defined by the people I interview. I'm defined about the places I go. I, um, I mean, when men send me picture, uh, videos about the Philippines or Thailand, I know they're thinking about prostitutes. When they're, uh, I don't care what they say. <laughs> it's just no reason to sit around and watch videos of Thailand, the Philippines, and Dominican Republic without thinking about prostitutes. Um, I have learned that there's no way to win, okay? You're never going to win this game. I, I can listen to complete criminals and extract good information from them. Life is good, guys, but walk away from the liars. And when you feel tempted to lie, the easy way to do it is just say nothing. It's super easy to be an honest person. But the more honest you are, the more you take that monkey off your back, that feeling of guilt and vengeance and shame, and you become uh, a correlation between your conscious mind and your subconscious. And that's congruency that, that makes us a better person. Okay, um, anybody that wants to be a Patreon member, a Patreon, there's a Patreon link in the thing. That's, that's people that I'm willing to uh, communicate with because I, I have to be real careful here. I'm not going to go back into any situations like I did in this social network where I'm uh, having to put up with people. I've already canceled a couple of guys that tried to be my patrons when I said, well, why would this person ever want to be a patron? I don't trust them as far as I can throw them. Okay, um, if I don't believe you're a good person, I don't want your money, okay? I want to believe that everybody's on the same page, that we're all trying our best to be honest with everybody and trying to learn how to navigate the world. See, as we go through, when, whenever you catch yourself telling a white lie or every time you, you hear somebody lying, think, stop, take a pause, a scissor, a stop in the music and go, how could I navigate this in a better way? Okay, I'm Andy Lee Graham. Become a patron, become, become an, um, I'm, I'm living the good life and I'd like to share that with you, okay? Um, contrary to what the, I, I'm always laughing at the people in the United States that are acting like they can't afford to live. It's, it's five times cheaper to live abroad than it is to live inside the United States. So there's 200 countries on the planet where it's ridiculously easy to afford any other. I actually came up with a number the other day. All you got to do is work 52 days inside the United States to live, to be able to afford to live 52 weeks abroad. So 52 days, 52 weeks. Okay, I'm Andy Lee Graham. I'm here and you're not. Why not? It's because I have confidence in myself. I'm self-assured. And when I'm 500 miles away, I'm not alone because I know that I'm with my best friend, myself.